Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a topic that has been on my mind since around the time I started my channel, if not a little before. And that's the idea that beauty YouTube is oversaturated. And I think the related question for people who are potential creators is that, is it too late to start YouTube? Is YouTube dead somehow? And in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on this idea that YouTube is oversaturated because I've heard this over and over again since joining this community back in 2014. Before I get into that, if you are new to the channel and you like project planning, conscious consumer content, low buy, no buy content, this is the place for you and I would love if you would subscribe. This idea that YouTube is oversaturated is one that I encountered back when I first joined the community. And I heard the term oversaturated specifically for the last six or seven years. This idea that YouTube is oversaturated implies a lot of things or frames YouTube in a really specific way. There's, it implies there's so many creators competing against each other. It's too full. YouTube is so full, it's hard to make it. And even hearing things like how most creators fail to get monetized. I heard this argument and this wording so often, I felt like there's no way I could possibly do YouTube or even be good at it. Because the implication here was that in order to be monetized or make it, you had to be so special to cut through the huge crowds of people, the literal hordes of people who are apparently on YouTube or trying to become YouTubers, um, that literally anybody except a really, really, really select few would get any views and even further than that, get sponsorships, monetization, or gain any kind of success in terms of numbers or money on the platform. I've heard the idea that YouTube is somehow dying, especially in the wake of the surgence of Vine, that there's no point in starting a channel and that there's a general feeling like YouTube is past its prime. YouTube prime was like 2012 and you hear a lot of nostalgia about that point in time. YouTube was so innocent and all of these creators who are just in their bedrooms, who like pulled out their phone and like were sharing what they love. And that's kind of how that time was described or is described. I think there's more to it than that because I'm a literal person in my bedroom talking about what I love. I think one of the main differences is that now there's an awareness before anybody even starts a channel that YouTube could be a career and that it pays even in some kind of way. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing why I don't believe this argument. And I think it creates a false sense of realities of YouTube. And I think it pits creators against each other. It discourages people to not start a channel and only view success or learning in terms of pure gain, um, in terms of money or subscribers. Meaning that the only successful people on YouTube are people who make money and people who make a full-time living off YouTube. In my opinion, 2020 was the year of YouTube um, because there were so many creators who started their channel in quarantine out of boredom or trying to start or show a skill. I've seen so many creators start in January or February and then gain 20, 50, 100, even 150,000 subscribers in one year. And I think this was not only a good year for creators, but I think that there's so many people who are at home in an unprecedented rate and a genuine need for entertainment and content, more so than ever before. When I hear the, the term oversaturated, I think of something that is so full, it's bursting. Like it literally cannot take anything more, like a sponge filled with water. There's so much water that like we're at the point, the YouTube market is at the point that one single content creator more would like tip the scale and nobody can compete. There's no more room. And in my opinion, this does not capture how YouTube monetization works or how viewing or subscriptions work either. 
And I think that's the first place to start. One of the reasons why I'm filming this video is I think that this mindset is kind of toxic and it's creators who are like creating fear and panic and like trying to claim this arena as their own and to almost in a sense gatekeep and prevent people from joining YouTube. And we'll talk about how like unhealthy competition and those kinds of things later. But first subscriptions. How many creators do you subscribe to? Is it one? Are you subscribed to literally one person? Likely not. My subscription feed is over 200 people. Many of us hold a lot of subscriptions, dozens or even hundreds. And we can hold subscriptions for people in the same niche. In my subscription feed alone, I do have people in the beauty space, even in the micro niche of like conscious consumerism, no bias, those kinds of things. I also have people in the fashion space and vloggers. I have uh, food channels. I have deep dive channels. I have a myriad of interests. I'm even subscribed to Kitchen Nightmares. I think there's a time and a place for that show. People often don't have one interest and people can subscribe to so many genres all at once. And it doesn't mean that just because somebody has YouTube that they're only watching beauty YouTube or that all creators in the beauty YouTube space are all the same. There's so many different kinds of creators. There's review heavy creators and people who like to haul. You have people who, who are really good at tutorials and get ready with me's and that's kind of their speciality. Then there's this micro niche of like conscious consumer kind of creators. There's niches within the beauty niche. And I think that there's variety is a good thing because you don't like every person's personality. Not every person who's ever watched one of my videos likes me or finds me relatable or interesting and that's okay. I've changed my preferences too. There are people who I've been subscribed to for years or people who I thought were entertaining and enjoyable at one point I've now changed my opinion on and that's normal and I think that having as many creators as we do is a good thing. And so my point is that people don't have one interest and even when they do, they can follow so many creators in the same genre and people within the beauty space are looking for different kinds of content and styles. But YouTube isn't like the restaurant industry or even the music industry where you have to pay to play if you wanna be on the business side of things. YouTube is free. And so you can follow as many creators as you want and watch as many videos from as many creators as you want. This is not a pay to play situation. Yes, there are some startup up costs like microphone and maybe editing equipment or a tripod, but you can get everything you need to start for less than $100. I next wanna talk about unhealthy competition. One viewer, can watch hundreds of videos a week or even a few in a day. Because I watched Teresa is Dead, her video at 2 p.m. on a Sunday, doesn't mean that takes away from the, the success of another channel. Subscribers can watch more than one video a day and YouTube prioritizes the first three hours of a video's life for a huge part of its success. Viewers can watch a lot of videos in a three hour window. And if you're somebody who works a nine to five job and you don't watch any YouTube between nine to five, it doesn't matter how many people are publishing videos within nine to five if you can't watch them. Just because I publish a video at two and Teresa's Dead also publishes a video at two, if you can't watch that video because you're working, doesn't affect either of us. This mindset instills a view where every creator is competition. Every new creator is a potential threat to your views and your channel, your monetization, your subscriber count, and even sponsorships. And generally creating more competition that generally steers people away from your channel and maybe never discovering it in the first place. There is something to be said that the algorithm doesn't support small creators. And if anything, the biggest gripes should be coming from small creators because the algorithm negatively affects them the most. 
but the people I've heard this most from is large creators. And it feels like they just want to keep their power and the privilege that they already have within the space. But even when it comes to competition and things like sponsorships, Anna Luisa doesn't just sponsor one person. They sponsor a variety of creators. And there's so many companies out there and there's businesses popping up all the time that a lot of people get sponsorships and PR and there's so many companies out there. But for me, viewing my channel only as this way of sponsorships and PRs and like I'm my channel is only valuable if I get those things. For me, it just is not the place that I want to be in. When you think about monetization, this is one of the biggest reasons why it doesn't work and even parts of the algorithm. So to be monetized, you need two things. You need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. There is no threshold for how many people can achieve monetization. So Rob Beauty Christie's monetization doesn't affect mine and vice versa. YouTube is ultimately about keeping people on the platform and engaged. And so I'm going to give you an example of that. One of the features of YouTube is recommended and the recommended page. So if you watch Kelly Gooch's channel and she does Project Pans, you could be recommended Sarah Rose's channel because you like Kelly Gooch and you watched it enough that YouTube has created an algorithm to suggest Sarah Rose to you. Watching one person's content can mean that you discover new creators that you might not have ever known about. And that happens through the algorithm and to keep you engaged. And this can also happen with videos. So my best example is a video that I published um, back in July called Seven Ways the Beauty Community Promotes Overconsumption. So it was published around July 29th, not around on July 29th. So at the beginning of November, I noticed a huge jump in my views. It was going really steady. And at that time in July, I didn't have 500 subscribers. When I published that video, I had about a hundred subscribers at that time, just over a hundred. But in November, my video started really picking up. And at that time I had around 500 and it was really, really noticeable. At that point, I had maybe one video um, that had gone over a thousand or a thousand was now starting to be um, a number that I could start um, using as a goal to uh, get my video views towards. So I went to go check that video because the incline, if you look at the, at the numbers is actually really dramatic. So I went to go look at that video. And what I noticed is that 65% of my suggested video traffic was coming from one video. And that video was Charlotte Holcroft's video, which currently has 58,000 views. And it's uh, titled something like Stop Shopping Like an Influencer. And she's a bigger creator. She has around 38,000 subscribers currently. I'm not sure how much she had a couple of months ago. But her video, um, yeah, her video has 58,000 views approximately. And the, ses the success of her video was driving people to my channel and to that specific video. So on that video, I gained 170 subscribers and that's the most subscribers I've gained from an individual video to date. The second closest is How My No Bias Changing My Life, which was published in June 2020. Um, it currently has 4.3 thousand views and I gained 87 subscribers. The second or the third is my project Panage over 2021 and I gained 58 subscribers from that. The seven ways the beauty community is promoting overconsumption. That video has just over 6,000 views. I thought it was closer to seven, but it's closer to six. So what was happening was people were watching Charlotte's video and then on their recommended was my video and people were clicking that video so often it kept being recommended alongside Charlotte's video or when people were watching it. And that has been a success and my views are still climbing. 
in my first month of monetization, that was in my top 10 uh, best performing videos of the month. And we're now in February. So I use this example to demonstrate that creators are not competition, that we can help each other in a lot of ways and the algorithm can do it for us even if we're not intentionally doing it. I'm not, view I'm not interested in viewing fellow creators as competition either or as detractors from what I do. And viewing money as the only determiner or definition of success is not what I want. YouTube can really promote the hustle, the side hustle, the culture of always being productive and anything that you do on the side should be monetized or they're only worth your time if they're able to make you money. I think that if that's the only way that you view yourself or your labor or your time or even what determines success for you if you're a creator on YouTube, for me, misses the point. Um, I'm able to do things now that I haven't been able to do before. I think the self-love project as an example is, is key for this or is a good example. If I was never on YouTube and I tried doing this project, I might fail because of accountability alone. And I'm able to talk through things, problems and struggles, not just in the self-love project, but even in my no buy and low buy that I don't think I would have done without this, without this content. And even if I'm talking individually speaking, as in like, I'm only thinking about myself, those are some examples. But at the same time, like I'm challenging myself in new ways and like really pushing myself out of my boundaries. And I'm learning to be a better communicator and public speaker, even though I'm not perfect. I'm learning new skills like graphic design and editing. Also, I'm gaining confidence in myself and my abilities. I just want to give you a really quick example. It's kind of been on my mind. I did a live stream recently and that was so outside of my comfort zone. I really wanted to do one. I felt like that would be a really nice way to engage with my community, but I was not very confident in that or being able to do it because I would have to speak live and you can't see other people so you can't just gauge their interactions and I really really wanted to do one but it was very outside of my comfort zone so I posted about it and I didn't even know what the reception of that would be I got 80 or 90 people who kind of responded to my poll and then it took me almost a month to actually schedule the live stream because I was so freaking nervous about it like nobody's going to come um, or like you're not going to be able to speak properly. You're going to be nervous. People aren't going to like you. And a lot of the old kind of messages I was telling myself about myself and I just scheduled it and I did it because and even though it wasn't perfect, it really wasn't perfect. And there's things about it that I would change, but for me, that was a real challenge to my confidence and my own abilities was capable and possible for me. And I was inspired to do it because of my self-love and confidence project. I hope to do more live streams in the future, but it's not just about the live stream. It's my thoughts and feelings about myself that led me to the way I talked about myself approaching that idea. And so YouTube has constantly allowed me to push myself out of my boundaries and make trying new things something that's way more regular than it ever has been before. Every new video is putting yourself there on the internet for everybody to see, people to potentially judge. You're putting out your ideas, your thoughts, sometimes your hopes and your dreams. And there's so many ways to push yourself on YouTube. And that's been the single most rewarding experience here and I've gained so much confidence in a year. I would never have done a live stream or anything equivalent to that a year ago. I did it and it was great and it was fun and like I want to do it again. And so I think that there's so much to YouTube and being a creator here that is changing my life because of how it's changed how I view myself and even ideas of success and the way I talk about myself. 
and think about myself. Well, good evening. I am editing this video back. She's right there. And I realized that the last part of my video didn't save or was cut off. And so I want to, you know, close out the video. But before I close out the video, I really want to say that if there are, if there's anybody out there who is thinking about starting a channel, I totally encourage you to do it for a lot of the things that I mentioned in this video. And if anybody ever has any questions about monetization or this process or, or starting a channel, I do understand that I'm very small. All my comment sections and my DMs on Instagram are always open. So that's going to conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching and being here today. And I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.